So then, now we're performing this check whenever a user selects two cards and we log out a different message to the console dependent on that result. Now, if they don't match, then we don't really need to do anything else to the cards. They're just going to flip back over later. But if they do match, then we need to do something to those two cards to say that they've been matched so that later we can keep them face up instead of turning them back over. And the way we're going to do this is by adding a matched property to all of our cards to begin with. So up at the top of the file where we initially make the cards array, I'm going to alt click on each card after the source property so that I can edit them all at once. And then we're going to add on a matched property for each one, which will be initially set to be false. So to begin with, none of the cards are matched, but if we match a pair, it will turn the matched property for that pair to be true. And by the way, don't forget, we duplicate these cards down in the shuffle cards function. So when we do that, each pair of cards is going to have that matched property always set to be false to begin with at the start of the game. So now if we scroll back down to our comparison code, this is where we want to set the matched property to be true for the two card choices if they do match. So how are we going to do this exactly? Well, what we need to do is update the cards state right here. Remember, all of the cards, including the duplicated ones, are stored in the state. So we have 12 cards in there. And what we need to do is update that state, find the cards that the user has selected, and we want to set the matched property of each of those to be true, right? So let me, first of all, get rid of this console log. And in fact, we'll get rid of this one as well. We don't need to do that anymore. And inside here, we want to use the set cards function to update the cards state. Now we're going to use the previous cards to do this. So the previous state. So let me say prev cards and pass that into a function which updates this state. And then we need to return the new value for the cards inside this. So what I'm going to do is return prev cards and we're going to map that to a new array. And inside that new array, it's going to have all of the same cards, but two of them, choice one and choice two, are going to have the matched property to be true. OK, so we fire a function for each card using the map method. And each time around, we want to check, does the card source equal to the source of what they've selected? So let's do that. Let's say if card dot source. So this is the card that we're currently iterating during the map method and we want to check does that equal so triple equals choice one or it could be choice two it doesn't really matter because the source of both are going to be the same so choice one dot source now if they match then we want to take this card and we want to set the matched property of that to be true so what we need to do in this case is return a new object which represents that card we want to spread out the card properties so Remember, we get access to the card. That's going to spread out the source and the matched property. But then we want to change the matched property to be true. Like so. All right. So now it's going to return this new object instead of the original card object in the new array right here that we return. Now, we need to also add on an else clause because if they don't match, then we just want to return the card as is because we don't need to change anything. So let me just go through this quickly again. If choice one source matches choice two source, then we have a match. So we're updating the card state. We take in the previous card state to update the state because we're going to use that inside it. So we're returning a new array right here of cards. And to do that, we take the previous cards and we use the map method. And the map method, remember, returns a new array based on this array. And all we do inside the map method is fire a function for each card. And each time we fire a function, we return the object that we want to place inside the new array that we're returning. So if the card source matches the choice one source, what a user selected, then we return a new object where we spread the card properties, the source and the matched property, but then we change the matched property to be true. So that is the new card object in that case, if they matched. If they don't, then we just return the card object unchanged. So this is going to be true for two of the cards inside the array because two of them are going to have this source. So we're setting the matched property to be true on both of them. And that will be the new cards state. So what I'm going to do now is down here, 
I'm going to console.log the card's state so that if we do change it and the component reevaluates and runs, it's going to log out the new card's data. So let's try this in the browser. All right then, so we can see initially when we logged them, we just see all the cards, and let me make this a bit bigger, we can see that matched is false on all of them, right? Now, if I click two card covers where the card image matches, like the helmet, click here. Well, if we take a look at that, nothing's changed, they're all still false, but if we click here now to match the other card, and it logs again, then down here, we're gonna see that this right here, matched is true for this helmet, and also down here matched is true for this helmet. So now in the state, we're keeping track of which cards have been matched and therefore we can update the UI to represent that. And that's what we're gonna to start to do in the next video.